Today, we're going to continue our conversation on personal finance. We'll talk food for thought, and I'll give you another PT plan. I am Simon the Zealot, and you are watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. We are going to start today's show with the food for thought segment because it will get us into the proper mindset as we continue our talk on personal finance. Today's food for thought is the age old saying, knowledge is power. Another way to say it is with the following ditty. If you know before you go, you can be selective and effective. So what does this mean? It means that the more that you know about your own assets and limitations, and the more you know about the circumstances around you, the better decision you can make and the more options you generally have given a particular situation. Armed with information and a thorough knowledge, you can better choose where to strike based on where your actions can produce the biggest results. This applies in warfighting strategy, but also in personal finance strategy. Knowing more creates the opportunity for doing more. With that said, let's talk about your financial health. Last time, we talked about money as a limited resource and figuring out to which of our unlimited desires to apply it. Today, we're going to work on the proper mindset to have when spending that limited resource. Let's start by discussing surplus. And in this conversation, we will always use one month as the time period that we're evaluating. A surplus in our context is created when you receive money, pay off all of your obligations and have money left over. That leftover money is your surplus. A deficit is the opposite. When your obligations exceed the money that you receive in a month. So how do we ensure that we have a continual surplus and that we do not create any deficits? Well, think about creating a surplus as the inverse of losing weight. The simple formula for losing weight is calories in must be less than calories out. The simple formula for gaining surplus is that money in must be greater than money out. Whatever is left after all of the spending in a given month is surplus and you can then accumulate that surplus and apply it to secure your future and whatever important goals you have set for yourself. Think lean body, fat wallet. So let's recap the entire conversation to this point. You should have some idea of what you want to accomplish in life. Those are your bigger goals. You should understand that you have more desires than resources. And you should therefore understand the need to leave some desires unmet because doing so will create and build a surplus that you can then use to attempt to achieve those bigger goals. Conversely, if you try to meet all of your desires, you will run out of resources and you will create a constant deficit, which will make attempting the bigger goals impossible uh, so far as finances are concerned. Decision making in terms of personal finance is knowledge and willpower working together. The willpower is all up to you, but I can give you some things to think about as you decide what to spend your money on. So first thought as you're spending, always, always, always keep the end in mind. I know that it's much easier to make a decision based on how you're currently feeling or what is right in front of you. But step back and think about the consequences. You need to determine whether what you're spending on at a particular moment is more valuable than what you could spend on elsewhere or later. Remember, spending is about trade-offs. Here versus there, this versus that, now versus later. This requires some foresight. Let me illustrate with an example. Let's say you eat out twice a week and that costs you $40. That is uh, $2,080 a year. Those two meals at the chow hall 
would cost you $10 a week, which comes out to $520 a year. That's a difference between the two eating habits of $1,560. Think of yourself a year from now. What bigger, more important goal could you apply that $1,560 to if you had that at the end of the year just by changing that one habit? The thing to remember is that bigger goals require time, and time, once given up, cannot be regained. So in five years of eating out, for example, you will have spent an additional $7,800 to support a particular lifestyle. And that's just one habit. Now, you add a stop to the coffee shop and a smoke break and a premium subscription to something, and all of a sudden you've surrendered all of your future options and you're losing sleep because you can't pay some bill or can't escape some circumstance or you expose yourself to high-risk endeavors in trying to make a bigger goal possible. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat out or whatever else. Uh, What I'm saying is that we're trying to build surplus. If you're trying to lose weight, maybe you shouldn't have that high-calorie dessert. If you're trying to build surplus, maybe you shouldn't have that high-cost habit. Maybe for you, that means cutting things out entirely while you build surplus. Maybe it's just cutting them back. You'll need to make that call, but don't expect to eat cheesecake three times a day and be thin. Building surplus, like losing weight, is about having the self-discipline to forego certain fleeting pleasures to enjoy more meaningful ones. There are two kinds of pain, the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. Remember, we're building surplus. Second thought, recognize that most of life is nice-to-haves and not have-to-haves. OCS or boot camp illustrate this. At OCS, the contents of your life are condensed into a wall locker, a foot locker, and a rack, and that's it. Now, I'm not saying that you should live like you're at OCS all the time, just that you can get by on very little. Remember, we're building surplus. Third thought, don't spend indiscriminately or on autopilot. Pause before each purchase and ask yourself, Do I really need this right now? What are my other options? Can this purchase wait? Is there some way that I can pay less for this? Keep in mind that every variable matters. For example, the same purchase made at a different time is a different purchase. Remember, we're building surplus. Fourth thought is don't be lazy. If you have other people doing things for you that you can do for yourself, keep in mind that they're not doing it because they like you so much. They are charging you a premium for that service. Have the initiative to do things that you can and the courage to learn things that you can't do yet. Remember, we're building surplus. Fifth and final thought, think logistics light. If your spending habits are too burdensome, you need to start slashing. Let me illustrate with a brief portion of a video by Military History Visualized on the approach of General Mattis to the invasion of Iraq. I will uh, leave the link in the description box to the whole video. Next is logistics light. Due to Mattis' focus on speed during the invasion of Iraq 2003, he transformed the division's logistical element. Similarly to the command element, the logistical element was reduced in numbers. During the restructure, the size of the logistics operations center was reduced from 120 to 26 personnel. Additionally, the Logistics Operations Center was tied to the Command Operations Center, thus allowing for faster responses and better integration with operations. Yet the Logistics Operations Center was just one part of the concept of Logistics Light. Another aspect was to transform the whole division into a leaner organization. He instructed the staff to think like a brigade and not a division. Additionally, he lowered the living standards for the whole division. Everybody was expected to sleep on the ground and not in a cot, which is a folding bed. As a result, eight medium lift tactical vehicles could be used for other purposes. Still, the division had around 5,000 vehicles in order to conserve fuel, expand the capacity and improve supply, several measures were taken. First, it was a court martial offense to waste fuel by idling. Second, every vehicle was fitted with gypsy racks to carry additional fuel, food and water. Third, fuel test kits were distributed in order to test captured fuel to repurpose it for the division. 
These measures increase the range and reduce the dependence on the logistical train, thus increasing the overall speed of the division. Remember, we're building surplus. So that's it for today's topic. I hope that gets your mind going on how you can be leaner and meaner financially. And I hope your Marines can benefit from this discussion as well. Next time, we will cover debt, which is a huge part of this equation, but requires its own video. Let's move. This week's PT plan is a circuit of various types of drags used in the military. You can PT a platoon or more with this exercise. It's on the drive, and the link is in the description box. So that's it for today's program. As always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or requests, leave them below. And as always, remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer.